Good morning. Happy Monday. It's been a long time since I've talked to you in the car. Um, Chile filed a opposition to Google's motion for leave to file a reply. And his argument against them being able to file a reply was worthless. Um, there's a, a couple fundamental f issues that Chile has is uh, bringing up new facts in a mo in a opposition to a motion, bringing up new facts in an opposition to a 12b6 motion to dismiss is not a new argument. Facts aren't an argument. Chile brought up a whole bunch of new facts in his opposition to Google's motion to transfer venue slash dismiss. Now, a 12b6 motion is based on the pleading. It's not based on any new facts that are alleged in an opposition to a motion to dismiss. It's based on the, uh, the allegations made in the motion to dis in the complaint. The allegations made in the complaint. That's what it's based on. That's, that is what the court is looking at. 12b6 says that the complaint doesn't state sufficient facts in order for this court to grant relief. There's, there's insufficient facts alleged in the complaint. So Chile coming behind and say, whoa, wait, 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 I have all these other facts. Number one, those aren't arguments. Those are facts. Facts aren't arguments. And number two, it doesn't correct the issue that those allegations, those factual allegations weren't made in the complaint. So that's a real problem. That's a huge problem for Chile. But now in his opposition to Google's motion for leave to file a reply in the 12b6 slash transfer motion, he is mistaking Google's desire to respond to new factual allegations as Google failing to make an adequate pleading in their 12b6 motion which doesn't make a whole lot of sense because they could only base their 12b6 motion on the facts in the complaint. And Chile alleging new facts in his opposition to their 12b6 motion, number one, is not sufficient to overcome the 12b6 motion, but number two, how are they supposed to know about these facts? And why should they have argued about those facts, even if they did know about them, when a 12b6 motion is based on the facts alleged in the complaint? It's a, it's a procedural issue. It's not, it's not an ultimate fairness issue. It's does the complaint say what it needs to say? Regardless of what all the facts are, does the complaint say everything it needs to say? Chile might be right, dead right. I mean, he might have all of the facts out there to support his cause of action, but if he doesn't allege them in the complaint, then the complaint gets dismissed. Maybe even with prejudice at some point, considering how many bites at the apple chilies had, it might be, I mean, we're getting to the point where the court is going to be like, mm, you've had this many opportunities and you've squandered them all. Uh, maybe you can't make things happen. I have a little, little curly cue that's doing a curly cue thing. So that's, that's number one. Number two, uh, he takes issue with a citation that Google made to a unpublished uh, opinion, a district court unpublished opinion. Now, if you look at what Google was citing, they were citing that case and they put in collection of cases at the end of it. So there's a citation and it says collection of cases or something very similar to collection of cases. Now, what they're doing when they make that citation is they're saying that, like, there are so many citations that we could cite to support our position that it would be stupid. So here is one case, one opinion, published or not, and all we're citing this opinion for is the fact that it cites all of these other positions supporting what we're trying to say. It All these, like, there's a, there's a specific 
argument, there's a specific legal argument that we're making that this other case also made, and it created basically a, a bibliography of, of cases that all stand for this one legal position that we're trying to make. So instead of making a ginormous string of citations, we're going to cite this one case, this one opinion, because it holds that enormous string of citations. So arguing with that one case isn't going to help Chili at all. Him pointing out that it's an unpublished uh, decision, well, that doesn't really help him out at all because he is citing unpublished opinions in his cases that actually don't help him. So there's a lot of issues. There's a lot of issues in there, but ultimately at the end of the day, what way is the court going to go? Now, is the court going to grant Google the opportunity to reply? And to that, I can only say, maybe. Uh, I would not be surprised if the court does not. Why would the court not? Well, number one, <laughs> because Google actually laid out everything the court needed to know. Chili didn't. <laughs> Chili's a moron. But Google laid out everything the court needed to know. The court can go and look up at that one case. And the court is even much more likely to do that. Now that Chili has said, wait, this is a bad citation. The court is probably going to look up that case and be like, oh, I understand because Google said this is, this is a collection of cases. I'm going to look at the, I'm going to look at all these other cases in there that this case is citing that support Google's position because the court's not stupid. The court, the court is educated. The court actually has a legal education and is, is going to understand the purpose for which Google cited that one specific opinion. So the court doesn't need, the court doesn't need to look or, or to allow Google to file a reply brief. Everything is already there. Everything is already there. The court, and what, one other thing I've seen courts do is I've seen courts, if they've already decided which way they're going to go, they may not allow oral arguments. They may not allow reply briefs because they already know which way they're going to go. And that doesn't mean that if they deny Google the opportunity to file a reply brief, that doesn't mean that they're unconvinced by Google's argument. It just means the court's just saying, I don't need any further argument on this. I don't need you to explain it anymore. I don't need to, you to give me any more uh, legal briefing on this. I know. I already know which way I'm going. I already know which way the law requires me to go. And so I'm going to go that way. So the court may uh, not allow Google to file a reply brief. Or since Chile made such a big deal about arguing over, because Chile actually starts arguing over the, the merits of this, of this potential reply brief, the court may be like, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to let you file a reply brief, reply brief because, because plaintiff has made, has basically said that these, these things are kind of an issue. I'm going to let Google file a reply brief to make sure that it's clear exactly what Google was saying so that plaintiff can understand it so that we have a clear record so that I could then grant Google's motion for transfer. Of course, again, one thing I want to caution everybody is the court doesn't harbor your personal hatred of Chile. The court does not. The court probably has a fairly limitless supply of <sighs> whatever. Let's just, okay, you've made your argument. I understand you have to make an argument. Now let's just move along. The court probably has an infinite supply of that or close to it. So the court may give Chile one or more additional bites at the apple and, and not dismiss the case. Or the court may dismiss the case because I don't think that Chile has any real opportunity based on the pleadings he's shown so far that to, uh, to make an operative complaint. But I would bet if I had to actually put money on it, and I don't, and I won't, but I would bet the court's not going to dismiss the case with prejudice. The court's probably going to transfer at least Google's portion to the Northern District of California and the court is is most likely going to not dismiss the case. And if if the court if the court does, the court is probably going to give Chile a certain period of time to file an amended complaint, not a supplemental complaint, an amended complaint taking to take care of the deficiencies in his whatever uh, amended complaint, first, second, third, fourth, I don't know what we're on right now. Um, but the court's probably going to allow him a, a set amount of time to prepare another amended complaint 
to take care of the uh, deficiencies in the pleadings, and then the then the uh, defendants, the remaining defendants in Massachusetts, would have an opportunity to file another twelve b six. So that's my best guess on the way it's going to go. The court might show me wrong and just dismiss the case outright because it is at least as pled right now, completely meritless and really stupid. Um, but who knows, who knows? I mean, the, the court has a lot of options available to it anyway. Thanks for watching and have a great day.